You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on love. More wisdom in less time. This is Brian welcoming you to The Philosopher's Notes on Love, What Life is All About by Leo Buscalia. We'll start with a quote from Leo Buscalia. He says, If he desired to know about automobiles, he would, without question, study diligently about automobiles. If his wife desired to be a gourmet cook, she'd certainly study the art of cooking, perhaps even attending a cooking class. Yet it never seems as obvious to him that if he wants to live in love, he must spend at least as much time as the auto mechanic or the gourmet in studying love. I smile as I type these words. Just having Buscalia's book, Love, open in front of me is enough to make me happy. Seriously, this is hands down one of my favorite books. I've purchased at least 250 copies of it. We used to give it away to all of our partners in my last business, Zods.com, and I used to bring a copy with me to nearly every business lunch I had. I'm a little wacky like that. And I'm 100% confident you'll fall in love with love as well. My guess is that by the end of reading it, you'll wish you could give Leo Buscalia, the former professor of love at USC, a big old hug. For now... Let's jump straight in, shall we? First big idea is study love. I'm deliberately going to repeat that intro quote because I think it's that important. If he desired to know about automobiles, he would, without question, study diligently about automobiles. If his wife desired to be a gourmet cook, she'd certainly study the art of cooking, perhaps even attending a cooking class. Yet it never seems as obvious to him that if he wants to live in love, he must spend at least as much time as the auto mechanic or the gourmet in studying love. Is it just me or isn't it kind of bizarre that we spend years and tens of thousands of dollars on our education, whether it's in law or business or medicine or whatever, and we don't spend a minute or a dollar studying what is arguably the most important subject of our lives, love? I definitely think so. How about you? Thankfully, we've got Buscalia to help us out. So go buy your books on love and take some workshops. Become a master. And where to start? Well, definitely start by picking up this book. Read it. Mark it all up. Start practicing what you're learning. And I highly recommend Gay and Katie Hendricks' work on conscious living and loving. I've spent five days in their workshops with my love, and the experience was absolutely transformative. You can read the note I wrote on their work, learn more about what they're up to at Hendrix.com, and check out their book, Conscious Loving. Some more quotes from Leo Buscali on the subject. He says, I would not want to form a partnership with an architect who has only a little knowledge of building or a broker who has a limited knowledge of the stock market. Still, we form what we hope to be permanent relationships in love with people who have hardly any knowledge of what love is. And he also says, it's never too late to learn anything for which you have a potential. If you want to learn to love, then you must start the process of finding out what it is, what qualities make up a loving person, and see how these are developed. Each person has the potential for love, but potential is never realized without work. This does not mean pain. Love, especially, is learned best in wonder, in joy, in peace, in living. Beautiful. And remember rule number one, you must, next big idea, love yourself. Quote, to love others, you must love yourself. You can only give to others what you have yourself. End quote. That's a really powerful rule. We can only give to others what we have ourselves. It reminds me of Ayn Rand's comment, to say I love you, one must first be able to say the I. More Buscalia, he says, To the extent to which you know yourself, and we are all more alike than different, you can know others. When you love yourself, you will love others. And to the depth and extent to which you can love yourself, only to that depth and extent will you be able to love others. And to love oneself is to struggle to rediscover and maintain your uniqueness. The next big idea is called Jump In. Quote, a total immersion in life offers the best classroom for learning to love. Okay, you've climbed up the precarious stairs on your way to the high dive. You've walked to the edge. You peer over. There's a voice in your head that says something like, oh my God, that's far down. Ah, now jump. 
immerse yourself in life. And remember Joseph Campbell's wisdom. He says, quote, a bit of advice given to a young Native American at the time of his initiation. As you go the way of life, you will see a great chasm. Jump. It's not as wide as you think. And of course, the easiest way to practice jumping in comes in our next big idea. Say yes. Buscalia says, perhaps the most positive word in the English language and the most conducive to continued growth in love is yes. A lover says yes to life, yes to joy, yes to knowledge, yes to people, yes to differences. Another one of my favorite teachers, Wayne Dyer, talks about the power of yes in his must-read book, The Power of Intention. He says, one of the most effective means for transcending ordinary and moving into the realm of extraordinary is saying yes more frequently and eliminating no almost completely. I call it saying yes to life. Say yes to yourself, to your family, your children, your coworkers, and your business. In that book, Dyer continues by urging his readers to adopt the attitude of the Sufi poet and mystic Hafez. He says, I rarely let the word no escape from my mouth because it is so plain to my soul that God has shouted yes, yes, yes to every luminous movement in existence. Say yes. And here's another poem from another Sufi poet, Rumi. He says, You were born with potential. You were born with goodness and trust. You were born with ideals and dreams. You were born with greatness. You were born with wings. You are not meant for crawling, so don't. You have wings. Learn to use them and fly. So, say yes, and remember to grow in love. Buscalia says, One does not fall in or out of love. One grows in love. I love that. That one sentence probably sums up my philosophy of love better than any other. One does not fall in or out of love. One grows in love. How about you? Are you falling in and out of love? Or are you growing in love? Next big idea is change. Quote, A great deterrent to love is found in anyone who fears change. For growing, learning, experiencing is change. Change is inevitable. There is only one thing of which you can be certain, and that is change. To deny change is to deny the only single reality. Attitudes change, feelings change, desires change, especially love changes. There is no stopping it, no holding it back. There is only going with it. That's powerful. Do you fight change? Think of ways that you may cling to how things are. Can you see how this is an obstacle to fully opening to love? Life is change. We need to learn to open to the existence of the natural unfolding of life and flow with rule number one, things change. And of course, remember to cuddle. The next big idea, quote, we need others. We need others to love and we need to be loved by them. There is no doubt that without it, we too, like the infant left alone, would cease to grow, cease to develop, choose madness and even death. So let's appreciate others today. In today's questions, who do you love and who loves you? In the PDF, you'll see that I have lines where you can actually write down, I love, and write down the people who you love. And I'm blessed to be loved by, with space for you to write down the people who you're blessed to be loved by. I highly recommend you jot that down, whether it's in the PDF or at home in your journal. Take some time today and write down who means a lot to you and how you can give them more love today. And in the process of doing that, remember the next big idea, which is be you. Buscalia says, we need not be afraid to touch, to feel, to show emotion. The easiest thing in the world is to be what you are, what you feel. The hardest thing to be is what other people want you to be. Wow, isn't it amazing how much energy we expend trying to be someone we think others want us to be? It's incredibly hard work. How about this? Just be yourself for a day, all of you, and see how that feels. And remember, Buscalia tells us, you can only be real on your path. The hardest thing in the world is to be something you're not. And check this out from Carlos Castaneda. It's one of the most powerful passages I've ever read. 
In fact, I've read it dozens of times and have found guidance from it during some of the most important decision-making moments in my life. Castaneda says, Each path is only one of a million paths. Therefore, you must always keep in mind that a path is only a path. If you feel that you must not follow it, you need not stay with it under any circumstances. Any path is only a path. There is no affront to yourself or others in dropping it, if that is what your heart tells you to do. But your decision to keep on the path or to leave it must be free of fear or ambition. I warn you, look at every path closely and deliberately. Try it as many times as you think necessary. Then ask yourself and yourself alone one question. Does this path have a heart? All paths are the same. They lead nowhere. There are paths going through the brush or into the brush or under the brush. Does this path have a heart is the only question. If it does, then the path is good. If it doesn't, it's of no use. So be you. Choose the path with heart. The next big idea is real love. Quote from Buscalia. He says, As soon as the love relationship does not lead me to me, as soon as I in a love relationship do not lead another person to himself, this love, even if it seems to be the most secure and ecstatic attachment I have ever experienced, is not true love. For real love is dedicated to continual becoming. That's definitely worth a rewind and re-listen. I love to envision love as the dynamic between two independent, creative individuals consciously choosing to support one another in the process of their own actualization. That is the ideal to which the relationship is committed. Not primarily to the other individual, no matter what. Of course, the relationship should be contingent. For true love, we need to maintain our commitment to continual becoming, not to the attachment we may feel to the other. Fun and challenging. And in the process, we need to remember to abhor waste. Buscalia says, this loving person is a person who abhors waste. Waste of time, waste of human potential. How much time we waste, as if we were going to live forever. Just a friendly reminder, we're not going to live forever. This isn't a dress rehearsal. So wake up. Live, love, be, dance, smile, laugh, hug, create, and all that other good stuff. And remember, underestimations. Buscalia says, too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. Wow. Who do you know that could use a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring? Yourself, perhaps? Some friends and loved ones? Let's never underestimate the power of love and remember to live for something. The final big idea, Buscalia says, it's not enough to have lived. We should be determined to live for something. May I suggest that it be creating joy for others? sharing what we have for the betterment of person kind, bringing hope to the lost and love to the lonely. So what are you living for? May I echo Buscalia's recommendation and suggest that we live for creating joy for others and sharing our greatest gifts in the greatest service to the world. I'll wrap up the note with a quote from Viktor Frankl, one of my absolute favorite thoughts that I've shared several times in these notes. He says, Again and again, I therefore admonish my students in Europe and America, don't aim at success. The more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you are going to miss it. For success, like happiness, cannot be pursued. It must ensue. And it only does so as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself or as the byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself. Happiness must happen, and the same holds for success. You have to let it happen by not caring about it. I want you to listen to what your conscience commands you to do, and go on to carry it out to the best of your knowledge. Then you will live to see that in the long run, in the long run, I say, 
success will follow you precisely because you had forgotten to think about it. Again, that's from Viktor Frankl from Man's Search for Meaning. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the book Love. Here's a little look at Leo Buscalia. Leo Buscalia, Ph.D., wrote more than a dozen books, most of which deal with the experience of love. At one time, five of his books appeared in the New York Times bestseller list concurrently. His first book, Love, has been a continual bestseller for more than 20 years. More than 18 million copies of his books are in print and have been translated into 17 languages. That's from the book. And if you enjoyed Love, I also think you'd really enjoy Living, Loving, and Learning by Buscalia. And if you like this note, you'll probably also like the note on Gay and Katie Hendricks, The Power of Intention, Rumi, Loving What Is, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and a Joseph Campbell Companion. So let's take a look at some of those quotes in the sidebar, and then we'll wrap it up. Start with a quote by Dr. Albert Schweitzer. He says, We are all so much together, but we are all dying of loneliness. And R.D. Lang says this in The Politics of Experience. What we think is less than what we know. What we know is less than what we love. What we love is so much less than what there is. And to this precise extent, we are much less than what we are. Herbert Otto says, Change and growth take place when a person has risked himself and dares to become involved with experimenting with his own life. Ray Bradbury says, first you jump off the cliff and you build your wings on the way down. Another Herbert Otto quote, we are all functioning at a small fraction of our capacity to live fully in its total meaning of loving, caring, creating, and adventuring. Consequently, the actualizing of our potential can become the most exciting adventure of our lifetime. Leo Buscalia says, I hug everybody. Just come close to me. You're more than likely to get hugged, certainly touched. From 1 Corinthians 13, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up. Its faith, hope, and patience never fail. Love is eternal. There are faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Henry David Thoreau offers, Birds never sing in caves. And Buscalia shares, You are the best you. You will always be the second best anyone else. And if one wishes to know love, one must live love in action. And finally, Thornton Wilder shares, There is a land of the living and a land of the dead. The bridge is love, the only truth, the only survival. The bridge is love, and let's get on it and walk toward our highest selves. Hope you enjoyed this philosopher's note and look forward to sharing more. Have a wonderful day. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.